Doctor Who returned with a thud at the end of last year, relegated thrall of Disney, sorry, Russell T. Davis, deciding to come back and man the plot once again, trying to recreate his own work from the 2005 to 2010 era. Unfortunately, it hasn't really worked, because for all the spectacle and fun he's clearly capable of writing, his mission as an LGBTQ activist seems to have overruled all of it. It certainly hasn't helped that the BBC's response to the dwindling numbers and the increasing threat of the end of the license fee has been to get in bed with Disney, literally the wokest, read, most culturally Marxist company in the world. But here comes the producer of the show to explain the many ways that we shouldn't worry about the Disneyfication, sorry, Disneyization, according to him, of the show. God, he can't even get the meme right. Hello, welcome back to Will of the Fans. My name is Will. See what I did there. Hope you're having a lovely day. If you find you're enjoying this content at some point, then remember there's a like button that you should definitely give a little click. If you'd like more people to enjoy the video with you and participate in the comments sections, and don't forget you can also subscribe to the channel if you'd like to keep me in the fight against obvious madness in our entertainment. Thank you very much. We're going to go over to Games Radar, which is a weird place to have a Doctor Who article, I suppose, but the site's got a shill. Uh, and here is Joel Collins, the, jo the Doctor Who producer, rather, saying not to worry about the Disneyization because of Russell T. Davis. Okay, um, straight away from the title, obviously, it's Disneyfication. This is what everybody calls it. You clearly are not paying attention to the internet. So, how you can claim to be plugged in or self-aware of any of this Disneyization is beyond me. Secondly, I don't like the fact that he's already <clears throat> trying to tell us that we should uh, not have any fears because of Russell T. Davis. Russell T. Davis has made a lot of mistakes so far with Doctor Who since returning. And honestly, a few back in his original run as well. Anyway, here's the exclusive Doctor Who exclu executive producer, sorry, Joel Collins takes Disney talks, uh, Disney's involvement in the new era. Right, slow down, Will, because apparently I'm dropping my words everywhere. Doctor Who is returning to our screens very soon, and executive producer Joel Collins has talked about Disney's involvement in the new era. Outside of the UK and Ireland, fresh episodes of Doctor Who will premiere on Disney+. Plus. Yes, we know this already. A new development that began with the David Tennant-led specials in 2023. But according to Collins, the show is the same Who that we all know and love. Thanks to showrunner Russell T. Davis's involvement. Okay. Ugh. This is exactly the opposite of the truth. Most people that I've spoken to, and that would be you guys in the comments, had um, a crumb of hope for Doctor Who after the disastrous Chibnall Whittaker run in the knowledge that Russell T. Davis was coming back. Some of us, myself included, had very little hope as Russell T. Davis crowbarred loads of gay stuff into the original run, and that was in a time when we were all much more tolerant, before we were being beaten over the head with it constantly. Which we are now. And don't say we're not. Because it's obvious. So, Russell T. Davis comes back and just dials the whole thing up to 11. No one is surprised. And, I mean, we all knew this was going to be the case as soon as he announced who the next Doctor was going to be. Because, in the first interview with Shooty Gutwa, all we got was non-binary, gay, black. I mean, two of these things exist, one doesn't. But the point is, it's all blended together, which should tell you where Russell T. Davis's perspective sits when it comes to Lugabutaku. Clearly, he's an activist. Clearly, he thinks that's all the same thing. When it's obviously, transparently not. Anyway, that is extremely Disney, but we'll get on to it. From the Disney perspective, it's just a bigger audience, Collins tells SFX magazine in the new issue, which features Halo Season 2 on the cover. Oh, God! Now, I don't know if any of you Doctor Who fans out there are also Halo fans, but if you saw the first series of that show, God! Awful. They broke every cardinal sin you could possibly break. You're not even supposed to see the guy's face. You got to see his ass. Anyway, poor old Master Chief. 
of course, I mean, he's not even able to trust SFX now. Not only do they have Halo Season 2 on the cover, but they're interviewing the producer of Woke to Who. Anyway, uh, so the show is bigger, but it's the same. It's hard to explain. So all of the fear that everyone had, the Disneyization or whatever you call it, just just go on the internet and actually watch a video made by anyone like me, probably many bigger channels than me. They all say Disneyfication, not Disneyization. That would only happen if it wasn't being made by Russell. Or by somebody who wasn't as big a fan as Russell. What about if um, Disney reads this article, Joel? Aren't you a little worried that you're uh, kind of biting the hand that feeds there, buddy? Like, I know everyone knows and Disney must know how much everyone hates them. But to actually go on record saying that there's fear of the Disney effect over something. Well, I mean... It's up to you if you think you can get away with it. I probably cleared it with the higher-ups at Disney first. Anyway, of course, they're maintaining here that Russell T. Davis remains a gigantic fan of uh, Doctor Who. Despite the fact that he has clearly not watched the last few series. I was shared a video by Golden Age Geek the, uh, uh, just this last uh, evening. And um, there's a video out by the Uber Geek where he uh, explains that uh, Russell T. Davis's claim that only Ruby Sunday has done a full circuit of the TARDIS since Rose Tyler is factually incorrect. And actually, it reminded a lot of us of various other characters who did apparent circuits of the TARDIS in Donna Noble, Vincent Van Gogh, and Clara Oswald. So, yeah, no. Apparently, Russell doesn't have a damn clue what he's talking about anymore because he's much more interested in the agenda. Just like everybody else who throws every other property that we love under the bus and sacrifices it on the altar of Lugabutuka and race and familiarism and all of that rubbish. As it turns out, Davis is also inspired by some of Disney's output. As Collins explains, Russell wanted to bring fun to it. He wanted to bring joy to the show. Well, it was already pretty joyous and fun in his original run and in Moffat's run just not in Chibnall's run. And challenge people in all the white, right ways that Russell does. Now, oh, there it is. Crowbarring it in. Challenge people in all the right ways. Mm. You've got to be challenged on your perception of the world. Oh, fuck off. My perception of the world is fine. It always was and it hasn't changed. Yours has. But also make it fun at the right points. Make it really fun. No, take you on a ride. Right, yeah, so make it so much fun, guys, that when you're all swept up in the fun, kids, you'll barely even notice that we're basically telling you that boys can become girls and girls can become boys. That's called indoctrination. And it's not like, oh, it's just for kids, it's just for adults or any of this stuff. Actually, he always looked at Pixar films in the way he wanted this to be. Jesus Christ. If you look at the Christmas special, special, he wanted to, it to have the fun of a Pixar film and the complex levels of a Pixar film. Okay, all right, let's get the church on Ruby Road and compare it to fucking Toy Story, shall we? Jesus, let's even compare it to Cars. They're nowhere close. Nowhere. There's no charm in the church on Ruby Road. None. Really, seriously, there's there's none whatsoever. No matter how well they're animated, they're all in the writing. They just are. They do workshops over the jokes, the humor, and the nuance. They work with every bit of that writing in Pixar to make sure that when they get the animation, it reaches every beat. And Russell has just, just has that innately. And that's what he says. So, should we blindly trust Russell T. Davis to uh, narrowly avoid... The pitfalls of Disneyfication or Disneyization? No, of course not. Russell T. Davis has driven this into a pit of Disney. Look, let's count the ways that Russell T. Davis has changed Doctor Who since coming back. Uh, he has used it no longer to subtly produce messaging, but to overtly produce messaging. And in no way is that more obvious than in Jason Rose Noble, a boy who thinks he's a girl being empowered to act as a girl and everyone even the doctor has to just fucking dance around it and be like oh she's such an amazing daughter she's so gorgeous it's a dude 
Uh, what else? Race swapping Isaac Newton. Yep, race swapping his uh, historically white characters. That's also very Disney. Uh, having the Doctor be subtly revealed as gay now after meeting Isaac Newton. I mean, there wasn't really much subtlety to it. He says, yeah, he was really hot. Oh, is that who I am now? I mean, can you be more ham-fisted? The only way he could have more obviously turned gay is if he suddenly started throating a kielbasa. Anyway, that wasn't very subtle. What else? Oh, yeah, by generation. A man gives birth to another man. Of a different race. Thereby implying that race and gender and all of that don't matter. And, of course, in the church on Ruby Road, dancing in a gay bar in a kilt, which is, of course because it resembles a skirt, and uh, then telling a police officer that he got snowman. Don't look it up. Do not look it up. All these things together are pretty much perfectly in line with Disney. If they're not perfectly in line with Disney, then what is? There really is nothing left to say. Let me know what you think about it in the comment section down below. Don't forget to like this video if you've enjoyed it and subscribe to Will and the Fans. If you'd like to see more of me, I'd like to see more of you. I'll be back with another video for you very, very soon. But until then, remember to question everything and I'll see you next time.